Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again on a uh, double flag Friday. Say that three times real quick. And uh, we got a couple things to talk about today. I'm going to go right downstairs. Let's get started. See what we got. Okay, going. next up, we want to tackle Ken's lantern that he was nice enough to bring down and give me at the uh, Zagre show. And you can see here, let's take a look at what it, the condition of it. You can see here it's got some, you know, some uh, just tarnish and rust and pitting you know but nothing bad nothing at all bad i mean it's a beautiful lantern and um and you can see how this works you unscrew the bottom here and the burner assembly comes out you see here there's your burner assembly and this is obviously where you put your fuel and there's uh now the i noticed that the the wick um knob to uh raise and lower the wick it doesn't engage the wick, and I don't know if that's because the wick. We'll have to work on that. We'll take everything apart. There's nothing much to take apart, you can see. There we go. The whole lantern is apart, and uh, it's. but it is a beauty, isn't it? And uh, it don't look like it's got much time on it, but we want to clean it up, make it look good, and get it operational. So let's do that okay, real quick. Okay, now uh, we found out how this comes out here. This screws off this burner assembly, screws off here and exposes the wick inside of the reservoir the fuel reservoir and that's how you fill it and that's how you change the wick out now you can see here it's a very simple operating lantern these were called dead flame lanterns because uh, they had no air um channels to channel the air back or the the uh, hot uh fuel they had no air tubes on the side that would uh, reburn some of the unburned fuel or to en enhance the candle power. So these were uh, typically earlier on, and um, this particular lantern was made, if you could see here, by Peter Gray out of Boston, Massachusetts. Later on, it became Peter Gray and Sons, and uh, it became one of the largest railroad suppliers of lanterns and lights and things like this. Now, you can see the difference here. This is a, obviously, the Peter Gray here. You could see it's a very ornate, nice-looking lamp. And uh, let me move you back here a little bit, and you'll see over here I have a uh, another example. And you can see here, it's not quite as ornate. These were usually had a, a nickel coating, or uh, and these here were just a, a plain steel. And you can see here, again, a dead flame lantern. But uh, these were the railroad lanterns. And you can see the difference in how, you know, more ornate and better looking. Look at the uh, the bell, the wire bell around it. This is just a regular wire, where this here is much more uh, substantial much better formed it's a beautiful it's just that's why they they command a lot of money in the uh in the uh resale market these go for much more than a standard railroad lantern but they've climbed up quite a bit in price let's okay, everything's all cleaned up all steel wooled went every over everything with light steel wool now i do i took this apart because i thought i could possibly pop these dents out if i could get from underneath but unfortunately there's a plate that has to be these two rivets would have to be removed and that access to this plate and right now until you know the value of a lamp you got to be careful about messing with certain ones and this one here is a you know a more of a collectible lamp you know that i i like to deal with rusty lamps things like this this is pretty collectible and i'll show you how you can tell right off the bat you see here this a globe and it's got a little hairline crack over here you can see just a little one just starting to begin can you see that there right there yeah but when you see a copper band around the bottom of a globe and this is a high quality thick glass globe you know you're dealing with an expensive lamp and they command a lot of money but if you start this is where you have to draw the line of how far you go you know this is just a cleanup the minute you start altering this and i do believe this had a lacquer coating on here because um if you look real close you could see little bits of it so i didn't want to you can't take this to the wire brush or anything you got to do everything by hand very very carefully and try and work with it that way because we want to just get it back into using shape without messing up the value but uh check the burner we got the uh the wick where it operates now with the uh the handle uh, cleaned that up, cleaned out the inside. This looks in good shape, cleaned up all the threads. Now we're going to put this uh, back together and uh, let's see now what happens. this little copper tab here, you can see that tab, that squeezes together that allows this whole plate that assembly to come out. I lubricated everything. I cleaned up all the soot and you can see 
it works fine that's that holds the globe down tightly so uh like i said everything's cleaned up and uh, ready to go but uh what we'll do is right now we're going to dry everything out make sure because they, i did uh clean this inside and out and i want to make sure it's all dry before i add any here's kerosene. a little pet peeve of mine uh remember we were taking this apart and the threads were squeaking i hate squeaky threads right you remember so you unscrew the bottom here and the burner assembly comes out well um what i did was i uh i steel wooled all the threads on the inside here i had to take an ice cream stick and steel wool all the inside threads and the outside threads here so now you can see when this goes on listen to the smoothness listen like a machine thread now that's beautiful. That's I always have I'm a stickler for squeaky threads, and I'll do the same thing with the burner assembly. I'll lubricate this with 3-in-1 oil, and then when you put that in, you won't have any of that squeak that annoys me. So here we go. This 100-year-old lantern is back in service, and I think it looks really nice. It has a beautiful little flame to it. Again, it's a dead flame lantern, so it uh, doesn't throw the kind of light that you would expect from the uh the other type lanterns but it is just really a beautiful looking lantern thanks so much ken really appreciate it okay next up uh i have a collection of these type of lights i always liked industrial type lights i'll get talking about more like that next week but now this here is a uh, called a Circle D. Uh, they were used by the fire departments and things like that. They were cast aluminum, uh, fantastic lights, and you could see they have a, a twist lock plug in the back, and it works off 110. It uses a R40 light bulb, which is here. Uh, just a, a lovely light, right? I always liked them. I use them at night and stuff, but. Uh, I was always looking for this particular type of uh, light that they had, but it was very hard to find. I found one on eBay. Let me show you. Now, Circle D was in business since 1947 with their uh, line of emergency lights. Uh, they still are in business today, still make the lights in different colors. And uh, the light I was looking for was the one on the right there, number 163. And I looked high and low. I received a box, and the box was uh, in good shape. It was wrapped well. It had uh, Fragili, must be Italian. Well, uh... <laughs> reference to the uh, Christmas story anyway uh, it was wrapped good it was and you know what happened the base broke off so I got it I sent the uh, lady the pictures and she was so nice and she just she uh, refunded me the entire price of these lights and they're so expensive but let me just show you what this light now is. this is the lamp that I've been waiting a long time to uh, find and I finally found it it's just a beautiful lamp but the base broke off now uh, you know, I can hopefully I'm gonna try I can switch the base to the other one because this is a heavier lamp and the other one will be lighter But let me show you my my problem. Okay, so here's the plate and uh, here is the break and you can see what kind of break it is now I cleaned it up originally. It was uh, It was a little bit dirty and and whatnot I cleaned it all with Brillo and Comet and I got all the dirt and everything off now Originally you see this break. It is a clean snap you know bink snapped off it's a cast aluminum now if you wanted to weld this with a tig you would have to use straight argon with no mix and i don't have a tig machine and it's a uh, it is a job but i do believe and i know you're going to smirk when i say this but i do believe that uh i think jb weld would be the best fix for this and i'll tell you why now originally i have these aluminum welding rods you remember, and i have good ones too these i paid a lot of money for they made in the usa but uh the problem is that because it don't penetrate the metal you'd have to put like a big glob around this uh weld and it would be kind of unsightly you know what i mean i want it to look similar to this now with the jb weld I would fill that crack, that small crack in with the JB Weld, obviously, but here's where it would get the strength from. Look in the bottom. That whole air, this whole piece is hollow, right? So if I fill that entire cavity with JB Weld, it's not going to be any more... It's, it's the JB Weld is what's going to hold it from the inside because it's, uh, you could see how it's going to grab everything. So it's, forget about the outside, you know, the outside is, it's, um, I think it'll work. I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. Keep your fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Now I have the uh, JB Weld, but I also found I have some PC7, which is a fantastic 
uh, epoxy too. It's a two-part epoxy, and that's what I'll use for the fill. So the JB Weld will go around the edge. Everything's been clean. Everything's uh, nice and dry. I'm just going to go over it with a little bit of acetone, make sure that there's no contaminants on there. We'll mix up some JB Weld. That's just going to be for the outside so it don't look bad, and the inside's going to be where all the strength is. Now, one of the most important factors when you're doing any kind of glue ups and anything is have your clamping system, how you're going to clamp it set up before. And you can see what we did here. Basically, I have a, a, a two by four raising the plate up. I have a regular clamps on each side, pressing that center section down. Now, I want to show you something here. You can here. see the glue is all pressed out. That means we got a good joint. Everything's lined up. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a uh, some paper towel with some alcohol and wipe that off and make it a clean outside okay you can see we wiped off the excess there now we're going to let that dry that's all jb weld in that crack we just want the crack to be held together so that when we fill the inside cavity this is all going to be filled in with the pc7 so hopefully that'll be strong here's an upside down view of it and here's what the inside looks like you can see here it's all Ready for the okay, PC I know set. some of you are, uh, are probably not on board with this type of repair. You're probably saying it's just not going to hold. It's not strong enough. But let me tell you the method of my madness and why I think this is a uh, superior way to fix this. I'm going to show you a little demonstration over here with a piece okay, of now tubing. Now remember that housing is hollow. So let's say you had a piece of tubing. Again, it was hollow, thin wall tubing like this, and it broke somehow. And you wanted to... Uh, put it back together. Would you run a braze around the outside of the tubing or maybe a weld? And uh, how strong would that be? Okay, it would, it would be somewhat strong, right? But I want to repair that stronger than it was. So let me show you uh, an analogy here. Now to fix this tube stronger than it was before, you would take a length of solid rod, put it in, insert it inside the hollow tube, and then bring the other side down. And now when you put a, it doesn't matter really what kind of, you're only holding it from it to, that it don't separate the, uh, the braze or whatever, but the real strength comes from the solid rod inside. And that's the same type of repair that I'm hoping to do on that, uh, Base. Okay, the repair is finished. It's been 24 hours. Uh, it really takes about seven days before it's completely 100% cured. But you can see here, there is that little seam line where there is the uh, the JB Weld on there. But uh, here I filled the whole inside in with this. Now, I could have smoothed this out, but I, I intentionally left it a little rough in case I wanted to put another layer on. That would give it something to grab. Again, you don't see that. But uh, here you can see it's been a day. That is as hard as cement I'm, or, or concrete. That is just rock hard. This here, I believe that this fix personally is stronger than the original casting because the casting is only like 330 seconds thick. It's only about that you know thin around this whole area and now this whole hollow area is filled all the way up till it stops here but it's filled with PC7 and uh, JB, so I think that's it. But I'll, I'll, I will uh, come across another base, I know, because they are a common base to all their lights. So uh, I will come across another one. In fact, I have a guy looking right now. But uh, I believe that this is good. I'm, we're going to hook it up and see and what happens. And here we go. The base is on there. It uh, looks good. Now, to loosen it, you just you don't have to turn it much. You just give a turn or two, and you can rotate this in any... Uh, any area you want, but we'll leave it up here in the flood position. Tightens up nicely, and uh, I think this is going to be a permanent repair. What's your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comments. Now, I am going to send that lady uh, a refund. I'm going to send her $40 because she shouldn't have refunded the entire amount of that lantern. And uh, that light is just so nice. Uh, it was only a base breakage, so uh, I will send her $40. She'll be very surprised to get it because I do believe what goes around comes around. And uh, you do the right thing and things always, good things happen to you. I've been very lucky. So I hope you have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye. Fragile! It must be Italian. I think that's...
Yes, it's fragile. Oh, yeah. 